Okay, before we will start this course, we'll need to talk about the requirements. Usually when you start to work on something, you will get some kind of requirements. So requirements are a list of things that your application should be able to do or what are the expectation from the application or the finished product. I've created a simple requirements and that's very simplified. Usually you have more complex uh, requirements but I would like to keep it very minimal. So we'll go through what needs to be done and what we will be doing in this tutorial. So we have app requirements. So our application will be showing uh, movies and that will be movie rater. So what we need to do is we need to store movies in database and we need to store title and description. Once we have that stored in a database, we'll need to create a list of these movies and we need to be able to see a list of movies. Then we need to be able to create a new movie and store it in the database. We need to update existing movie and we need also should be able to remove a movie from our database. So basically we are doing a typical CRUD, which is create, read, update and delete and so we need to also implement it in the front end. So our application should be able to rate movie. So as a user, we need to rate movie from uh, one to five stars actually, and not from zero stars. And then uh, it should be uh, limited to one rate per user. So if you rate it already your movie then the next time you will rate it we will actually update your rating instead of creating a new one and then we should be able to register user and login user in our application so we'll have login and register page also we need to authorize and restrict the application to login users only so that's our requirement for our application and we will be developing all of that during this uh, tutorial. We'll do uh, all of this uh, listed and the outputs need to be uh, three outputs. So basically we'll need to create a backend API that will handle all our data and also it will store our data in the database. And we'll also need to have a web page which is web application and needs to be sing single page application that means we're not gonna reload our page will load dynamically content and stay on the same page all the time and also we need to create mobile application and we'll create a mobile application for ios and android and we'll be using cross-platform solution based on the same uh, framework as of the web single page application so that's our requirements for this project and that's what we're going to build in this tutorial. In this video, I will show you what technologies we will be using in this tutorial. So let's go through all the frameworks and languages that we'll use. So first, we'll create three different applications in our course. First, we'll create an API. So we'll create a banked API to serve our data from the database to the front end. Then we'll move to a front end and we'll create a web application. And lastly, we will create a mobile app for Android and iOS. So starting with our backend, for this we'll use a Django web framework. In fact, Django web framework is a full stack framework that we could possibly do everything. So we could build the entire application in Django only, but we are not going to do this. I will show you more efficient way to create a front-end application, but uh, we will use our Django for our backend API. That means we'll take the data, um, data from our database and we'll serve it with a JSON format to our front-end. And for that we will use Django REST framework. That's another library on top of Django and it will help us build our API. And for that, the combination of Django and Django REST framework is so powerful and we will do our API in no time. For our backend, we will be using Python language. So Python language is very easy to learn and I will guide you through all the things you need to uh, write your backend API. But basic understanding of Python will be required 
as I'm not gonna explain everything from the very beginning how to uh, write a Python. I will, try, I will do my best to, to do it as easy as possible. Next thing, we will create our web front-end uh, web application and for, we will be we will have already our backend data ready so we'll fetch the data from the front end and display that on our web application or web page and for that we'll use a react js framework that framework is has been developed by facebook and it's very popular framework at the moment so we will use javascript to react next we'll move to our mobile application and for that we'll use React Native. React Native it's a version of React that will compile and build as a native application on both Android and iOS. We'll use a lot of console that we already learn in React and we'll apply it to React Native. I will also would like to show you this page which is hotframeworks.com and that kind of explain why I pick that stack that uh, technologies at the first place so we are here on the hotframeworks.com and you can see many of the frameworks here are listed and those here are listed with different colors that's uh, that's are the most popular of all time across all the languages so you can see here we have react on the second place and then we have django on the sixth place at the moment so Knowing that, you know that these frameworks probably are not going to go anywhere soon, so they will stay and very stable. If we pick a specific language, like a Python here, you can see Django is overall winner with a score of 92. So that's a Django here on the top line, and you can see from 2015, probably from where that page exists, it's on the top all time long. So that means Django is a very good fit and a very good framework to pick. Let's go to the JavaScript. And you can see here React is on the second place. At the moment it has the same score as Django AngularJS, but I have to say that AngularJS is kind of dying because uh, Google developed another framework which is Angular and it's a little bit less popular than React at the moment. So React soon probably will be on the top of uh, this list. Like, as you can see here, React is that blue line here. So it is getting more and more popular now. And probably in a, some time it will just overtake the Angular JS and it, it will be on the top. So obviously this is uh, also a very good uh, choice for us. Also the fact that it's developed by uh, Facebook, that means uh, this giant will uh, take care of the new releases and developing uh, more features in the, in the future. And also the community for these frameworks are uh, huge. So that's a very good stack and we can be sure that it is on the top of the bleeding edge technology that we can use at the moment. Okay, let's talk about IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And what is a IDE? IDE, it's our text editor that will be a kind of program that we will use for writing our code and then also, this will come with some extra features. Basically, to write a code, we don't need any tools, almost any tools. We can open a simple text editor and then edit, uh, write that code manually in that editor and we will uh, tell the program to run it. So, this is not required, but it's very helpful to have some kind of tools to help us and uh, makes everything easier and much faster. So the basic pro program you will need to have is a text editor and you have a lot of different text editor, but uh, text editor will help you write a text. You will have a color coding and that will help you write a text. So you have some snippets and you will have some uh, hints and, and so on. But IDE comes with some extra features and I will show you during this, uh, that tutorial how the program can help us, for example, running the server, having Git included and so on and so on. 
So there is a lot of uh, useful feature and I will encourage you to install one of the uh, IDE. I will talk about it in a second because that will help us a lot. So the first IDE that we will use, it's a PyCharm. It comes with a, uh, from a JetBrains company. And you can see here, uh, we are on the page JetBrains.com, PyCharm. I will show you later on how we can install that uh, IDE because this is what we'll use for our backend Django. And that's uh, PyCharm is designed to work with a Python. And they, they have two versions, so they have paid and uh, free. Free will be uh, just enough for us to cover everything what we need to do in our Python. So one option for our uh, Python development will be the PyCharm, and I highly recommend it because it's a very good IDE. Everything is included and ready set up for us to use in the moment when we install it. Another option, and this is what we will also use in this tutorial, and mostly for our framework, is a Visual Studio Code. I have to say that Visual Studio Code is not the same as Visual Code Studio. So make sure if you download that IDE, it, it is Visual Studio Code, so it has to have code at the very end. And Visual Studio Code works with many different languages. And you can see here, it's on many different uh, platforms uh, as well. And that's Visual Studio it's coming from a Microsoft and it's a lightweight version of Visual Studio and it's also free. So go ahead and uh, download this one because it's also very, very helpful. Another option that we won't use in this uh, tutorial, but if you don't like any of those and would like to use something else, another option will be, for example, brackets. And you can see here that's coming from Adobe. You can also use the brackets. Or another alternative will be Sublime Text, very popular text editor. As you can see here, you have code hinting and everything included here. Here, So if you don't want to use the Visual Studio Code, you can exchange it with Sublime Text. And another option will be, uh, if you like it, Atom.io. And you can also uh, download that for your operating system. So that will be the options you have. You have more options, but I just listed the most popular one. But as I said, we'll focus on two. So we will use the PyCharm for a backend with Python and we'll use Visual Studio Code for our frontend. Hi, in this video, I will show you how we can debug the code and how we can inspect things that are happening on our website, on our application. And I will explain more during the tutorial because we'll use it a lot. Before we will start with anything else, I would like to show you what is available and how we can access that. So at the moment I'm in the Firefox here, but you can do it in any browser. So I pick a random website here and let's try to inspect what's happening here. So this is how the website looks like for a normal user. Uh, by normal user is, I mean, the user that will use this website. But for us developers, we have another options inside our browsers that we can use for our advantage. So anywhere on the website, I can right click here and I can do inspect element. And that will be available option in every single uh, browser. So basically what we need to do is we need to inspect. So once I will inspect, you can see on the right hand side here, or it might be here on the do dock to bottom like that, depends on your uh, setup, uh, there is a new section available. You can close it and you will see the whole page like this. Or you can just uh, open, clicking web developer, and you can see here inspector for example. So. What we have here, you can see here, it's uh, our website start to flashing because we hover on things and, and some things happen. I will revert it back to the site. So I will pick. Talk to right. And we'll have more spaces here. So basically we have few tabs here. The first one is inspector. Inspector help us inspect the page. So let's say we have this logistics simplified here. I can click on this and you can see here, this is highlighted. So we can see what was the element written to display this. And you can see this was h1 tag with some class here. And if you go here, 
I will make it a little bit bigger for you to see. So basically, if I cl right click here and I will inspect, you can see here, this is our H1 tag. Also, this is the CSS elements available for this selector. So you can see here, class element heading, this is the one that controls the font size. And you can see 55, it's the font size for this. So I can actually toggle this, you can see on and off, or I could click on this and I can change it from here. So you can see, I, I can change it to 100 pixels and this is so big. It doesn't mean that I changed the website. I just changed the view of this website. If I refresh it now, you can see everything is back to normal because we just load a new website from the server and this is how they set up. And you can see 55 is back again. So changing here is just a temporary changes. But this is sometimes very useful if you would like to tweak something precisely. So it's better to play in the browser. And once you know what will be the values here, you can code it in your text editor. So basically you, you have a little bit options here for HTML and also you have CSS. So you can play either with this or you can with this. If I will click this and I will remove it, I can remove it from the website. You can see clicking on this element, clicking delete, I can remove the whole elements like this and the website change automatically. So another option is console. Console is uh, something that we can, it's a space where we can send some messages or we can see some errors and so on. So if we would like to push something from our code, some information to the browser, we can do it console log and it will be pushed here and available here. Also, we can test our uh, JavaScript here. So what I can do is I can do, for example, and you can see I've done this alert hello on the website because I can write here any JavaScript. So I can also do, for example, things like this, and you can see that's the date, the current date as we are in uh, now. So this is the space where we can see the data and we can use the data and experiment with the data. Another tab, I don't see it here, but I can click on the icon here, is the very useful, is the network tab. Network tab, show us everything what has been downloaded from the backend from the server. So you can see here the methods has been used and the data. If I click on any of those, you can see if I go response, I can see the user modules and other information that has been downloaded from this page. So this this is what we will use to see the data coming from our Django API. And you can see this is also JSON format. So we will use a similar thing. If I will have that resources here, I can also click on all and I will see all of resources. But at the moment I'm, we are interested in XHR, which is the call for a server to get the data. If I will say, click on this, to load another page, you can see more data has been downloaded. And for example, this get here, you can see some information has been requested from the server and displayed on this uh, page. Like for example, you can see here, save 30% on log logic stick calls. It's probably some of the text that is displayed on this uh, page. So they load it from our, from and their uh, backend API and display that on frontend. So this is how you work with this inspector and you have a few tabs there and there's uh, uh, more options. So go ahead and explore what's available there and whatever you would like to toggle it, you can close it and you can do right click and inspect element and then you can switch to any tab you uh, like. So this is built in every single browser and we will be using that a lot in our tutorials.